As you guys are probably well aware, I make a lot of videos on espresso machines. And what's kind of interesting as a YouTuber is you start to notice these patterns of comments on your videos. And without fail, anytime I post an espresso machine video, somebody will comment, holy smokes, that is way too much work. Who has the time in the morning? Go buy a pod machine. To which some more people will reply, no, pods are hugely expensive and they are terrible for the environment. And then sometimes that comment is followed up by somebody saying, wrong, you can actually buy reusable pods. And this has always made me curious because if these reusable pods are actually somewhat usable and you can put your own coffee into a pod machine, then it kind of breaks open the whole pods are bad argument in some ways. So I bought one or I bought a few different types and I experimented. Now, before we get into this video, I wanna make it clear, this is not a place for people to be snobby or elitist about people who drink Nespresso. I think that people should drink whatever kind of coffee they like. If you can afford an espresso system, great. If you can afford a Breville, great. If you can afford a La Morzocco, that is great. I drink my espresso out of a $5,000 system, but I do not judge people who drink Nespresso if they like that. So probably neither should you. With that out of the way, let's jump right in because I did, like I said, a lot of research into these. And what I found is that there is definitively one best kind of these reusable pods. And that is those types with the sticker on top. I'm gonna to leave this exact set that I've been using linked down in the description below. However, it's not necessarily too surprising because these ones with the sticker most closely emulate the original Nespresso pods. So probably the big question that you're wondering is, are these actually good? Can you put your own coffee into an espresso system and get good coffee for cheaper and be able to use whatever coffee you want? And the answer is absolutely yes. However, there are a few things you should know before you run out and buy one of these because they're not quite as straightforward as they might seem. Even though these are still using a pod system, now that you're introducing your own coffee and you're dosing the coffee into here yourself, there is going to be somewhat of a dialing in process. Not as much as a full-fledged espresso machine, but you do still have to do some tweaking. And here's what that looks like. The first thing is figuring out what kind of coffee you can and can't use in these pods. Just like any espresso machine, you're going to need something that is ground for espresso. These might seem like pressurized baskets, but there's actually a bit of dialing in required to get these to work properly. And using an espresso grind if you're buying pre-ground is a great place to start. If you're grinding your own coffee, you're still gonna have to have a good quality or a decent quality burr grinder. Using something like a blade grinder that leaves big chunks and small chunks isn't going to work in these. The other thing to note is that these are slightly smaller or at least shorter than the original Nespresso capsules. And that is because it doesn't want to damage the blade that would usually puncture the bottom of these. What that means is that these reusable pods fit only around four grams of coffee, whereas the original Nespresso fits around five. Not a big deal, just something to note. Now, speaking of amounts of coffee, putting four grams of coffee in here is gonna cost you about 20 cents whereas an espresso pod generally runs around 80 cents to a dollar. So if you're talking about price savings, that's what you're looking at. Refilling these on your own is gonna be about a quarter of the cost of buying Nespresso pods. All right, let me show you how I prep one of these to get a good shot out of the Nespresso. So like I said, these pods hold around four grams. Now you're not gonna to need to use a scale or anything. I wouldn't be that precise because you're gonna be packing this kind of nice and tight and it's a very small space, the dosing tends to be relatively consistent. So what I like to do is form a bit of a funnel with my fingers and then simply pour the coffee in until it gets right up to the top rim. So once it's full like that, we're gonna want to give it one tamp. Now the tamping pressure you use is not going to be a espresso tamping pressure. We're not looking to get, you know, 10, 20 kilograms of pressure. We are just compacting this in. I don't think you give that much force with this little plastic spoon that comes with it anyways. So once we've tamped it, you can see that we're probably about 
I don't know, two thirds of the way full. So we're gonna want to again, fill it up to the rim. And then tamp it down again. And on that second tamp, there should probably be a couple millimeters of space between the top of the bed and where that cover is going to go. Now, I think this is one of the big parts that a lot of people get frustrated and why you see some negative reviews about these user fillable pods is because people don't do this process. They just dump some coffee in, seal it up and throw it in their machine. And from my experience, that simply does not work. So if you get the right grind of coffee, you dose it incorrectly and you tamp it decently, then you're gonna get some reasonable shots. So of course, the last step is to simply cover up with one of these stickers. This pack that I linked to comes with a hundred of these to start with. Another misconception that I see is they say to put a rubber gasket at the top of this basket and they don't mean the top lip. What they're actually referring to is on the bottom here, that rubber gasket is around the bottom of the lip. So that's where that rubber needs to be, not on the top. and make sure that it's nice and sealed all the way around the outside. And there you have it, you're all ready to go. So now that you have the pod prepped, you're ready to make some coffee. And one of the big advantages that I found about using your own coffee, because it is so much cheaper, you can use more traditional ratios. With the standard Nespresso pods from that five grams of coffee, they're pulling anywhere from 60 to 70, even more sometimes, grams of liquid, which is a very long shot. And in my opinion, that leads to slightly bitter and over extracted shots. When you're using your own coffee, you can use a more traditional ratio and pull two back to back. You're still only spending about half the cost of an espresso pod. And what you end up getting is a often better tasting, stronger cup of coffee. Is it a typical espresso? No, it is still a very long ratio. However, it is better. So when I put one of these in, let me turn this machine on. You put it in just like any other pod, drop it in there. You might notice a bit of resistance as you close it down, but here we go. Then I'm actually gonna use a scale. Yes, I understand the irony of using a $300 scale on an espresso machine, but we're gonna do it anyways, because what I found is that pulling 35 grams out of that four grams is a good balance between having it properly extracted, but not sacrificing too much strength. Yes, four to 35 is still a very long ratio, but that's the game we play with Nespresso. It is not really a traditional espresso, it's more of a coffee shot, if you will. All right, so let's tear this and let's pull our first shot. There we go. It looks identical to any of the other pods. Keep in mind, it is possible to choke this machine if you pack too tightly. So again, that's the playing around that you have to do. We're at the 20 grams. And you can actually see on that one, I've kind of choked it towards the end. So that's trickling to my 35 grams. It was, if anything, actually a little bit slow, which is something you don't often see on an espresso machine. Again, kind of cool to be using your own pods. So I've got 35 grams in this cup. Now all I'm gonna do is dump that first pod and put in my second. That one's actually got quite a dark crema coming at the start, so maybe a bit of inconsistency there. 50 grams. You can often hear a bit of creaking that you don't normally get from the Nespresso machine. I think it's building a bit more pressure with these custom pots. And I'm gonna stop that there. So that's creeping up towards 70 grams. 
So now we have a stronger shot. And not only do we have a stronger shot, we have a better extracted shot. And most importantly, I've used the coffee of my choice. I've often noticed using these pods, you often get a darker crema on the top. Again, it's kind of a fake crema because it's using a pressurizing system, but it's often a little bit darker than even the stock pods, which is interesting. Taste-wise, is it espresso? No. Like I was saying, it is a coffee shot, just like any of the other Nespresso pods. But I found with the ability to tweak, I can get better shots out of these custom pods. Again, for less money with the coffee I want. And that's really it. I think that these user fillable pods are actually a very successful product where you start to see some negative reviews, I think, is where people don't have experience with espresso machines and they think they can just dump in some coffee seal it up and put it in their machine. And there really is a bit more to it than that. You have to get the right grind, you have to put the right amount in, you do have to tamp it. And if you have your own grinder, you have to make sure to tweak the grind setting accordingly. It is a little bit of dialing in, not the amount of a full espresso machine, but you do have to be willing to tinker a little. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you're gonna have no trouble at all. So again, I will leave these exact pods that I use linked down in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, Please leave us a like and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.